This little cute digital pet loves to eat Wi-Fi. The more Wi-Fi you carry him around to feed on, the more evolved his little AI brain becomes. And the better he becomes at collecting Wi-Fi handshakes, which can potentially be used to figure out the passwords of Wi-Fi networks. This is a Ponagachi. It is made from a Raspberry Pi Zero, an e-ink display and some clever software. There are even cool plugins for it, like this Wall of Flippers plugin that detects nearby Flipper Zeros. But this is not what this video is about. This video is about a new piece of software, which takes automatic collection of Wi-Fi handshakes to the next level. Building a Ponagachi is a fun weekend project and you get a cute new little friend. But let's take a look at this new similar piece of software called Angry Oxide. This is primarily a learning tool and you should only test it on networks you have permission to use it on. Angry Oxide is a Wi-Fi penetration testing tool that collects Wi-Fi handshakes either passively or through various clever and fully autonomous manipulation methods. When a device connects to a Wi-Fi access point, the access point on the device agrees on a common encryption key based on your Wi-Fi password through what is known as a four-way handshake. It is possible to capture these handshakes or parts of them and sometimes convince the access point or even a client to hand some of them over. This handshake hash that we collect will not reveal the password of the Wi-Fi network directly. That would be too easy. But we can use a different application to test a massive amount of potential passwords on it to see if any of them are equal to the Wi-Fi password. The methods used by Angry Oxide are similar to our little Ponagachi friend. And it attempts to be a bit more sneaky than the aggressive deauthentication spam found in an ESP32 Marauder. Let us try and attack our very secure access point. I run Angry Oxide on a laptop running Kali Linux, but you can also run it on a Raspberry Pi or in a virtual machine. Angry Oxide needs to be run as root. To launch the application, we first of all need to define the interface of the Wi-Fi card we will be using. I'm using a USB wireless network card by Alpha. There is a list of recommended devices on the GitHub wiki. Then we need to define the target access point, either by the name or by a MAC address. If we know what channels the access point operates on, we can define them with C. Alternatively, we can set the argument auto hunt and let Angry Oxide find the channels by itself. If we don't define a target, Angry Oxide will attempt to actively gather handshakes from all nearby access points on the channels defined. There are other interesting command line arguments available, such as rate, which defines how aggressively Angry Oxide will act on a scale from 1 to 3, or no transmit, which will have Angry Oxide be completely passive unless a target is selected from the list of available access points. Running Angry Oxide, we are presented with four tabs to switch between. The first is a list of access points that Angry Oxide has found and the channels that we've defined. Our targeted very secure access point is marked with an X and is at the top of the list. Even though Angry Oxide only attempts active attacks on our selected target, it will still passively collect handshakes from other nearby access points as they occur. We can see the MAC address, SSID, number of connected clients, the amount of attack packets we've transmitted, as well as whether we've successfully gathered a complete handshake or PMKID for the access point. We can scroll through the list of access points by using the W and S buttons to see more information for each access point, and we can select a target by pressing T. To navigate between tabs, use the A and D buttons on your keyboard. The next tab is the Stations tab. Here we find a list of clients detected, and we can see how many attack packets we've transmitted, as well as if we've successfully collected any handshakes directly from them by imitating the access point. We can also see how many probes those clients have transmitted. On the Handshakes tab, we find a list of every occurred authentication sequence, and we can see whether we've been successful in collecting the handshake data related to those. If we get a checkmark in the OK column that indicates that we've gathered sufficient data to save an HC22000 file that we can attempt to crack with Hashcat, Angry Oxide does a series of validations to ensure that the handshakes are valid and compresses and saves the files when we exit the application. On the final status tab, we can see a bunch of statistics as well as a log of what the application is doing. 
This is also where we would find location data if we had a GPS connected, and this would allow us to do war driving with Angry Arcside as well. Once we've captured the handshake hash, we essentially have a copy of the padlock that the Wi-Fi access point and the device used to encrypt the messages with. The key to this padlock is the password to our Wi-Fi network. We don't have the key yet, but we can use an application called Hashcat to try a bunch of different keys on this lock. We can do this without interacting with or even being near our very secure access point. We type out the command to start Hashcat and choose our freshly obtained HC22000 file, as well as define what word list will be used. A word list is a huge file full of passwords, and you can find many of these online that consists of actual passwords that other people have used. Running through the word list in Hashcat can take a few seconds, or many hours, depending on how big the word list is, how fast your computer is, and how far through the list Hashcat has to look to find our password. And even then it might not find the password at all, if it is not equal to any of the words found in our word list. It is also possible to run a brute force attack with Hashcat, which will try every combination of letters and numbers. But this can take an extremely long time if we don't define certain rule sets based on known information about the typical structure of the suspected password. In this instance, it took us only a few seconds to find the simple password to our very secure access point. This is why it is important to choose uncommon passwords to prevent others from gaining access to your network. Angry Oxide is more useful and more controllable than a Ponagotchi, but it is a bit more cumbersome to have to bring a laptop along, although you could run it from a battery-powered Raspberry Pi. Angry Oxide is a new and rapidly evolving application. Check out the Discord from the developer where you can ask questions and provide feedback and new ideas. I hope I've given you a small insight into what Angry Oxide and Wi-Fi security is all about.